Hello everyone, this is Daniel with FitnessBlender.com and today we're going to be going through an upper body strength training workout that's built specifically for people who get bored easily. Now if you've never done one of these before, basically all that means is that we're going to be doing a different exercise for every single set, so no repeat exercises at all. So we're going to be doing each one of these exercises for about 45 seconds on, 15 second break to pick out your weights and move on to the next exercise. So we're going to be moving through this really quickly. The only thing you need for this is a set of dumbbells and an optional bench. If you don't have one, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can just do this laying on the ground. But before we get that started, we need to get our warm up done. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, let's go ahead and get our warm up going. We're going to be doing each one of these for roughly about 30 seconds each, just to get that blood pumping and get those muscles warmed up. So we're doing an arm cross side steps, so nice and slow. Stepping left to right, just make sure you have a different arm coming over top every single time. Always want to make sure that you're trying to keep your body even left to right. Whatever you do on the left side, you want to make sure you do the exact same thing on the right. Just keep it going. Keep those lungs open. And moving into a bicep tricep curl. So you're going to be using both your bicep and tricep to work against one another. Slowly curl up, press it back down. Try to open those arms out, curl up, press back down. So just keep alternating back and forth. Keep it close, straight in front of your body. And then nice and slow, with those arms pointing out as wide as is comfortable. So nice, slow, controlled motion. Again, working against yourself as hard as you can. Start pushing harder and harder, really resisting that motion as much as you can towards the end. All right, we're doing a front push pull next. So nice and slow, you're gonna squat down, press out, pull it back in, squeeze it as hard as you can, then press it right back out again. Again, same thing like with those bicep tricep, you're working against yourself as much as you possibly can. Squeeze in, press it back out. Make sure you're keeping those shoulders down, don't hunch them up towards your neck. Practicing nice clean form, just like you're doing a chest press. Let it relax for just a second. We're doing an overhead reach with a side bend. So you're gonna bring one arm over your head, bend off to that side, bring it back down, a little bit of a crunch contraction, press it out again. Again, starting with just the motion, but then working into really starting to work against yourself. So pressing those muscles in opposite directions to really get it working. Same thing on the other side, press it out, contract, breathe nice and deep, work against yourself as much as you can, get as much range of motion as possible, at the same time as really uh, pushing and pulling simultaneously to get those muscles to work. doing a toe touch sweep, so feet just about uh, shoulder width apart, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, you can go down, sweep across those toes, come back up, back down, back up on the other side, just keep alternating back and forth, nice and slow. Try it again, focus on getting a nice full range of motion out of it. Back up, we're doing a torso rotation with the knee, so rotate those shoulders as you bring that opposite knee up. So whichever ro direction you're rotating, that knee is gonna be the one that comes up. So rotate, try to pull your knee across in front of your body, opposite direction, pushing that knee opposite direction from those shoulders. So nice, slow, controlled motion. Work on range of motion first, then start contracting those muscles really nice and tight, working against yourself. And do some arm circles, so arms straight out from your shoulders. Nice small circle. Keep that, that spine nice and neutral, so no rounding those shoulders forward or arching back. That circle should be around that shoulder joint rather than in front of or behind your body. Reverse the direction. Going into a boxer shuffle. Stay up on those toes, start warming yourself up a little bit more. Since we're mainly focusing on that upper body, we're not trying to really get into a, a heavy cardio warm up. 
This is just kind of starting to try to get those muscles warm just through that upper body. All right, we got about 10 seconds left till I have the last warm up exercise. We're gonna be switching off to a jumping jack to try to really get those shoulders, uh, rhomboids, and your chest nice and warmed up. So move it starting slowly, whatever's comfortable for you, and then speed it up as you can. Keep those shoulders nice and tight the entire time. Don't let those arms just swing around. You want it constantly controlled. Just keep those lungs open. Nice quick motion. Almost done. And let it relax. All right. We'll be right back to start into it with the regular routine. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started with the regular portion of this routine. Now we're gonna be doing each one of these exercises for 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of time to set up and move into that next exercise. So I would suggest pausing it right here if you haven't looked through the exercises you're going to be doing today. Take a second to look through them and get an idea of what weight you wanna use for each one of those exercises because when you start getting tired towards the end of this, you're not gonna be thinking really clearly and you're gonna start stumbling on what weight you need to be using next. So I highly suggest getting a good idea of where you need to be before we start. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get this going. We're gonna be starting off with a chest fly and we're using 15 pounds. So, straight up in front of your chest, nice and slow down, out to the sides, right back up over top of your chest. Nice slow controlled motion, slight bend in your elbow, inside of that elbow facing up towards the ceiling. Just keep it going nice and slow under control. Try not to pause the top for too long. Keep those muscles slightly contracted at least the entire time. Keep those lungs open. Keep those core muscles contract even though you're not really using them too much for this exercise. And let it relax. All right, we're moving on to a reverse fly. So this one's going to be really wide. Most people are pretty weak in this position, so I'm going to be using a pretty light amount of weight here. Nice flat back, tip straight forward, arms come up and out to the sides. Try to keep that chest as parallel to the ground as you can. The main thing is focusing on full range of motion. So if you can't get as much range of motion as you're seeing me, uh, getting through, you either need to work on your flexibility, try to gain that range of motion, or drop the amount of weight that you're lifting so you can go all the way through that full range of motion. You don't want to build strength in only a small portion of that range. Just keep it going. Lungs open, flat back, keep checking that back, make sure it stays flat, it doesn't round out on you. Relax. All right, moving on to a close chest press. Let's see. So this is a regular chest press. So heavier weight is usually a lot better than a regular fly. So sorry, this is a close chest press. So elbows in towards your sides, palms facing in towards one another. Elbows come down to your sides. Press it right back over top of that shoulder. Nice slow. Controlled motion. Keep those lungs open. Again, core muscles contracted even though they're not really working all that hard for this. Switch it out. We're doing a close row next. So drop that weight just a little bit. So bend over. Keep those feet nice and close together. Draw those elbows up to your side. So this is probably going to be your strongest position with a row. Is keeping those elbows tucked in. So that next row we're going to be doing for this next group. You're going to want to drop your weight a pretty decent amount from this when we do a wide row. 
But before we do that, we've got a regular wide chest press. Again, keep checking that lower back, make sure you're not rounding your back. Just a few seconds left. All right. Here we go, a regular wide chest press. Use a little more weight for this. Like I said, this is gonna move really fast. So if you need to pause, take your time, by all means do so. All right, those elbows come wide, out to the side, straight out from that shoulder joint. As long as you're not lifting too heavy on this, that shoulder should be perfectly fine. Make sure that you don't overdo it on weight for these until you know you can control that range of motion. Nice slow controlled motion. Make sure you're moving down and back up at the same pace. Relax. All right, we're doing a wide row, like I warned you last. I'm gonna want to use a fairly light amount of weight on this one. All right, bent over, arms come up and out to the side. Again, Range of motion is more important than the amount of weight you're lifting, so don't try to get too over uh, focused on lifting more and more and more weight. You should only increase the amount of weight you're lifting. If you can get through your full uh, sets, your full number of repetitions you're trying to go for, and have no problem finishing all sets. Almost done. Doing an incline push up next. So I'm gonna be using the bench for this. So nice, just a regular push up. You can do this just flat on the ground if you don't have something uh, elevated to do your push up off of. A nice slow controlled motion, whichever version of a push up you want. I suggest kind of going somewhere in between a wide push up and a narrow push up. So it makes the elbows kind of coming back at about a 45 degree angle off your body. Get those lungs open. All right. Go back. We're doing a bent over incline row. So again, that weight just a little bit for this one. My rhomboids are getting a little tired. So tip over about a 45 degree angle and then up from there. We're trying to as closely match that angle you're doing for your push up. So 45 is not going to be quite right, but it'll be close. So this is going to be working because we're at a 45, kind of halfway between just shoulder, like if you're doing a shrug or a standing uh, jerk or doing a full bent over row. So it's a little bit between your trapezius and your rhomboid as far as which one's doing the most work. <sighs> Relax. All right, we're gonna start changing our focus of which muscles we're on. We're doing an Arnold press next. So either seated or standing, those dumbbells are gonna come straight in front of your face. Nice and slow, press up and rotate out. So by the time you're finished, your palms should be facing forward. Slowly bring them back down, palms facing back towards you. Keep those shoulders within, or sorry, those elbows 
within your shoulder width. You don't want to let those elbows kick out as you come down. That's going to start turning into more of just a traditional shoulder press. So nice and slow. Rotate as you press up. Keeping those elbows in nice and close. Making sure that back stays relatively neutral. No arching your back or rounding forward. Whew. All right, we're doing a dumbbell pullover next. So actually I'm gonna keep the same amount of weight. Lay out flat on your back. Hands directly above your shoulders. Palms facing down towards those toes. Drop those hands over top of your head and pull it right back over top of that shoulder. If you start feeling like you're gonna lose it towards the top, like those arms can't bring those weights back up, you're lifting too much, you need to drop weight. You should be able to get down to parallel with the rest of your body without feeling like you're going to lose control. Nice slow controlled motion. This should be not only an exercise, but almost feels like a stretch as well. So you go down as low as is comfortable on that shoulder joint. And let it relax. All right, we're moving on to a lateral raise. Nice and light on this one, so just about five pounds per hand. Lateral is straight out to your sides. Let's bring those dumbbells straight up all the way over your head, right back down again to your sides, palms facing forward. We're going to be kind of mimicking this exact same motion for our next pullover. Nice slow controlled motion. Take your time. Don't rush through it. The slower you go, the more controlled you are, the more strength you're gonna build up through that entire range of motion. If you start going too fast, you're gonna start using momentum, and then you're gonna start skipping spots. Make sure those arms are straight out from one another. Don't let those arms come in front of your body. And let it relax. All right, switch to just one dumbbell. We're gonna start with your left side first, laying down on the ground or on your bench. That arm is going to stay straight up above that shoulder. Kind of balance yourself however you need to. That arm comes directly over top of that head. Or sorry, extend it out over top of that shoulder straight above your head. And then bring it right back perpendicular to the ground. So nice and slow out. And back up. Try to keep your shoulders perpendicular to the ground as well. You don't want them. You don't want them to lean too far back or too far forward. You want to keep it straight, one on top of the other. It's going to be a little hard to do because it's a bit of an awkward position, but do what you can. Keep those lungs open, core contracted nice and tight. And let that relax. All right, we're doing a shoulder press next. Those arms are nice and tired. I'm going to drop that weight just a little bit from what I would normally do. Let's make sure I can get through the clean form. Arms straight out to your sides. Again, standing or seated, doesn't matter. Straight up over your head. Nice and slow back down. Either way, if you're seated or standing, make sure that you're keeping that, that, uh, excuse me, that spine neutral. Keep that back flat so you're not arching that chest, like tilting it back too much. You want to keep it pretty much straight up and down. Just kind of go to that happy place, keep that form nice and clean. Keep focusing on everything nice and straight. Perfect form. If you start giving out, let's go ahead and drop that weight. Give it a second. Whew. All right, I got one more round. That pullover, I'm going to be using the same thing on the other side this time. So lay it out. Hand starts directly above that shoulder. Try to keep those shoulders stacked out as far as you can over that head, then stop right above that shoulder. Remember, start light if you've never done this before. This is kind of an awkward position. You can always build up uh, weight as you have more control, but you never, ever want to go too heavy. Otherwise, that chance of injury is just 
Way too high to play with. Nice slow controlled motion. Keep those lungs open. Make sure when you bring that arm back up, it stops directly above that shoulder. It doesn't go any further over, because then you're going to start working a different muscle group. So keep it right above that shoulder joint. And let it relax. All right. That is the end of our first group of this. Go grab a drink of water. We'll be right back to finish off that second half. All right, everybody, we are back from our water break, so let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Start my timer here. We're starting off with an overhand curl, so definitely start light on this one if you've never done this exercise before. So, nice straight back, palms facing back behind you as much as you can. Curl up just like you would for a normal curl, just keeping those palms facing down towards the ground. Nice, slow, contracted motion, tight, tight squeeze the top of that range. Just like a regular curl, you want to keep that elbow directly underneath that shoulder joint. Don't let it kick back or pull forward. That's one of the big no-nos that a lot of people do, is when they get up to the top of that range of motion, they bring their elbow forward and it actually allows your bicep to relax a little bit and uses more of your shoulder to do the range of motion. So keep that elbow back and that bicep will get a lot more work. Nice slow controlled motion, still focusing on keeping that palm facing down. Got overhead tricep extension next. So you can switch your weight for that. Needs a little bit more on this one. So you can do this one either seated or standing, whichever is more comfortable. And straight up above your head, nice and slow, straight back, and press it right back over top of your head again. Keep that elbow directly above that shoulder. You shouldn't really be able to see your upper arm, your biceps. So if you can see them, then they're tipping too far forward. So try to pull that arm back a little bit more. One thing to also be aware of is that lower back. When you're doing this kind of position, you're gonna have a tendency to wanna to tilt your chest back. Keep that core tight. Pull that belly button in so that spine stays neutral. No arching that lower back. Just keep it going. Got hammer curls coming up next. And let it relax. All right, so actually I think I'm gonna leave my weight exactly the same for these hammer curls. These are gonna be palms facing in towards each other. Neutral spine, nice and slow. Pull that dumbbell straight up to that shoulder, slowly back down. Try not to let it completely relax. Leave that bicep contracted slightly. Right back down again. Just keep that motion going. Again, just like a traditional curl, keep that elbow directly underneath that shoulder. No letting it pull forward. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Keep those core muscles contracted, keeping a nice, neutral spine. Try to let those shoulders hunch up into that neck. And let it relax. We're gonna be doing a tricep kickback next. Drop that weight for a fair amount here. I actually just did the second half of this routine just a second ago and forgot to record audio. So <laughs> a lot of these exercises I'm going to be a little bit tired on, so forgive me. So these elbows are gonna be up by your rib cage and they stay there the entire time. Kick that hand directly back behind you, then pause directly in front of that, or directly underneath that elbow again. Keep that back as parallel to the ground as possible. Just moving through that motion. Keep those lungs open. Focusing on that form. Nice tight squeeze at the top of that range of motion. All right.
right. Another kickback, so we're doing a traditional bicep curl next. Use 15 pounds for these. So, palms facing forward for this one, nice and slow. Curl it straight up, slowly back down. Get those elbows, again, directly underneath that shoulder joint. Keep that motion nice and slow under control. A lot of people have a tendency to want to swing when they're doing curls, to kind of like lift it up. And all you're doing is cheating. You're using body weight and momentum to push that weight rather than putting that weight on that bicep. So the slower you go, and the more you control where that elbow is, keeping it back to underneath that shoulder, the more work you're gonna get on that bicep itself. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Take your time. Keep those elbows down, or sorry, those shoulders down from your ears. Whew, that relax. All right, we have tricep dips next. So, further out you put your feet, the harder it's gonna be. The closer in underneath you, the easier it's going to be. So this hand should be really nice and close to that butt. Either using a bench or a chair, doesn't matter. Drop it down and right back up. Keep your back as close to the edge of that bench or seat as you can. It's a nice, slow, controlled motion. Let's go to that happy place. Try to keep those elbows pulled in nice and tight. Ooh, gotta let them shake out for a second. As you get tired, those elbows are gonna to wanna to start kind of kicking out to the side. So keep them really nice and close. Squeeze them back behind you to protect that shoulder. Oh man, that hurts. Did I mention I already did this? <laughs> keep it going. And let it relax. All right, we have one more group to go. This is a short group. This one is going to be focusing on rotator cuff, and I'm going to be using really, really lightweight. These are just two and a half pounds a piece. It's actually the extra slug for my dumbbells. Bring those elbows up and out to the side. Rotate that shoulder straight up so your palm is above your shoulder, your hand is above your shoulder, and then slowly back down. So nice, slow, controlled motion back and forth. Just take your time. This is not for speed. You don't want to move quickly with this. Those rotator cuff muscles are very small, particularly weak uh, as far as muscles go. And so they're very, very prone to injury. So make sure you're not overdoing that range of motion unless you have the flexibility and control for it. And definitely make sure you're not lifting too much weight. Too much weight, you're gonna be increasing that chance of injuring that rotator cuff. So something really nice and light. Let it relax, we're gonna do that same exact position, laying down. So, arms are gonna be oriented exactly the same way from your chest, so elbows out to your sides. Try to keep a, a straight line from elbow to elbow through your shoulders, nice and slow. Rotate that hand back, and then pull it straight back up over top of that shoulder. Just nice, slow, controlled motion. Contract those core muscles, even though they're not really doing anything. Focus on that range of motion. Those elbows are gonna kind of rotate around a little bit, but try to keep them as stationary as possible. All that rotation, all that movement you want from coming inside that shoulder joint. So nice, slow motion. Focusing on keeping that elbow straight across from one another and perpendicular to the ground, that upper arm perpendicular to the ground. And let it relax, drop one of those dumbbells. We're going to be doing a side rotator cuff motion now. So laying on your side, start with that left arm first. Pin that elbow to your rib cage and open it straight up as tight as you can. Squeeze it back nice and slow back down. So that range of motion is going to try to start stopping you about a 45 degree angle or so. Keep pushing it back, really squeeze into it and right back down. Again, use something very, very light and do not swing or jerk your arm. Otherwise, it's gonna drastically increase your chance of injury. So nice, slow, controlled motion, lightweight, keeping that elbow at a 90 degree angle, elbow pinned to that rib cage. 
and let it relax. Should be feeling a nice burn on all these. If you're not, you might want to increase the amount of weight you're using next time you go through this routine. Alright, same thing on the other side. Elbow pinched to your rib cage. Keep that elbow at a 90 degree angle. Open it straight up above that rib. Alright, back down. Nice slow controlled motion. These exercises are really good for building up endurance and strength in that rotator cuff. Like I said, it's a very, very weak muscle and very prone to injury. It's one of those things where you can kind of just sit in the car reaching back at one of your kids or something like that and you can pull that rotator cuff muscle. So it's a good idea to keep them really nice and uh, in shape, keep them toned, keep them uh, endurance nice and high and make sure they're nice and strong. And let it relax. All right, that is the end of the workout, but we still have our cool down to do, so we'll be right back to start into that. All right, let's go ahead and get this cool down done. We're doing an arm cross stretch to begin with. So standing up nice and straight and tall, bring that arm across in front of your body, grab hold of that elbow, pull across, and keep it as close to your body as you can. So you're going to be trying to feel it across that rhomboid, across that shoulder blade area. If you want to get that uh, little bit of a torso stretch, kind of lean away from it, lean into it. Just make sure you keep that arm in pulled nice and close to try to stretch that shoulder. Do the same thing on the other side here in just a second. And switch sides, grab that elbow, pull across. Keep those lungs open. Really try to get a good stretch in here. Those muscles should be feeling a little bit tight, a little bit swollen. This will help kind of let them relax a little bit. Overhead tricep extension. So first stretch up stretch. Bring back that hand back to that same arm as shoulder. Or hand as shoulder and then bring that other arm up. Grab that elbow, pull across. Just keep that torso straight up and down. Try not to arch your back out. Keep that, those uh, abdominal muscles contracted nice and tight. It's kind of pulling across. Should be feeling it through the back of that uh, tricep, back of that upper arm, as well as a little bit into that shoulder. Same thing on the other side. Hand to shoulder. Grab that elbow, pull across. Try not to arch that lower back. Keep those abdominal muscles contracted. I'll look for those other stretches you want. Like so, if you lean over a little bit, you're gonna feel that torso a little bit. All right, wall chest stretches next. So, palm against a wall or door frame, fingers facing back behind you, and just rotate across on that hand, trying to feel it through the front of your chest. If you're feeling it in your bicep, Make sure you rotate your palm, your uh, arm so that inside of that elbow is facing up. If you want it more in your bicep, face it forward. If you want to feel it more in your hand, step back on that hand a little bit more. You should feel it through the palm of that hand a little bit. Something on the other side. Hands against the wall, door frame, and open that chest up. Try to keep that hand just about shoulder height. Again, if you're feeling it in your bicep, it means your uh, inside of your elbow is facing forward. Try to turn it up and you should feel it more in just your chest. If you want to feel it more in your hand and forearm, then just rock back on that hand a little bit more. Just kind of step across. Relax. We're doing a front wall stretch, so both those hands on the wall. Press that chest down between those arms. Should feel it through the inside of that elbow, or sorry, excuse me, inside of that shoulder, kind of where that armpit is, maybe even into the front of that rib cage, and underside of that arm, bicep, maybe a little bit through the top of that shoulder, depending on where you're tight. Next one is going to be a uh, 
hand stretch, so we're going to tip that hand, uh, elbow facing up, or inside of the elbow facing up, grab those fingers and pull back towards your forearm. And you should feel this all the way through your palm and through the front of your forearm as you do this. It's a really, really good stretch for people who have desk jobs and type a lot. Um, whether you're using your phone or using a computer, those hands can get really, really tight. Same thing on the other side. Make sure you have that thumb in there as well. Stretch that back. Just pull on it as tight as is comfortable for you. I said it should be able to feel this through your the kind of the meat of your thumb, through the center of your hand, as well as especially through the top part of that or the inside of that forearm. Just have one more stretch to go after this. Relax. So, the feet just about shoulder width apart. Take your tip straight forward. Grab those hands back behind your head. Just kind of let them stretch forward. If this is a little bit too uncomfortable for you, by all means go find like the top of a dresser, tabletop, something like that. Put your hands on top of that and then slowly drop into a little bit of a lunge or a squat to stretch those arms. This one gets a little bit of your hamstrings as well as the front of that shoulder. And let it relax. All right, guys, I hope you like that workout. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, this workout is complete. See you guys next time.